I've avoided talking about this topic for so long, honestly, because I just think there's so many more important things to talk about and too many Christians, I think, hyper focus on this and make this the focus of their prayer life and all their social interactions, but the people wanna know, so I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk with you today about dating and specifically how to date as a Christian. Christian dating is about falling in love with God. Because everything we do as Christians is about falling in love with God. Directly, through prayer and service, but also indirectly, through the way that we live our lives and the things that we do that fills our day. If how we're living isn't leading us to fall deeper in love with God, then we're living wrong. Christian dating is no exception. There's no part of our life that we can keep hidden or separate from God. We can never compartmentalize and say, my faith life is over here and my romantic life is over here and my work life is over here. Jesus says in scripture, a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. If you lead a divided, compartmentalized life, you're not living an authentic life and that's not going to allow you to thrive. And God wants you to thrive. And the way that we thrive as human beings is not keeping our lives separate, but keeping all parts of our life integrated and having God at the center of that. If how you're dating isn't leading you to fall deeper in love with God, then you're dating wrong. And maybe you shouldn't even be dating right now until you can figure that out. The purpose of dating is A, to have a homecoming date, B, not to be lonely, C, to take cute Instagram pictures, or D, marriage. Which one do we think this is? The purpose of dating is marriage, to lead you to holy matrimony, which is a sacrament. And as a sacrament, it's a visible sign of the love of God. Through marriage, you participate in the divine gift of God and bring forth children. And your love mirrors that of God's love for his people, the church. If you're called to marriage, it's your vocation, how you love God best and are led to heaven. The way that you date should prepare you to enter into heaven. If you're like, whoa, Maggie, that's pretty intense. Yeah, it is. And if that intimidates you, then you maybe shouldn't be dating right now. Okay, well then when should you start dating? I know people who've started dating really young, like in middle school when they were 11. Gross. Imagine dating as an 11 year old. There's any 11 year olds watching. Thank you. You are great. You are loved by God. I do not think you should be dating. Many people start dating really young because that's what their friends are doing or because that's what their older siblings did or because they're curious or because they think it'll make them look cool or they really want to get their first kiss and they want to get experience. Honey, no, you don't need experience. You need maturity. You need the wisdom and the virtue to date in such a way that you won't be hurting yourself, your future spouse, or the person you're dating. I have friends in their mid to late 20s who are still suffering from the dating mistakes they made when they were preteens and teenagers. Dating is serious. It involves your heart. It involves another person's heart. It involves your eternity because it's supposed to lead you to heaven. If you don't think you're at that place maturity-wise, that is okay. Focus on so many other things. Focus on your own identity, forming your own personality. Focus on your prayer life, on your relationship with God. Focus on building friendships. Prioritize other things first until you think you're ready to date. And then when you are ready to date, it's not like you abandon all those other things, but you're able to date well. If you can honestly say, yes, I'm a mature, wise person who's striving for deeper virtue. I wanna date in preparation for marriage. Maybe I won't be able to get married this year or next year because I'm still so young, but I'm at a place in my life where I'm looking forward to marriage and how I date right now will lead me to that. If you can honestly say that. And if you can truly say the person that I am dating or interested in dating is also a mature, wise person seeking virtue. If your parents give you permission and if you're at that place, then great, go for it. Date well, may God bless you in that endeavor. I have a really good friend of mine who started dating early in high school and she and her boyfriend got engaged, got married. They now have children, they have a beautiful life together and they started dating in high school. It's possible. You can can date well in high school and it can lead you to marriage. It's possible, but it's very rare. Do you know how many friends I have? I have a lot. Out of all those friends, I only have one that has married her high school sweetheart. So it's possible, but you have to know that it is unlikely. It is unlikely that the person you are currently dating or interested in dating while in high school will be your marriage partner, but you can still date well in a way that will prepare you for your vocation and help your boyfriend or your girlfriend prepare for theirs. If you are currently dating someone right now, no matter your age, whether you're a high schooler, college student,
student, a young adult, even older, if you're dating, ask yourself these questions and try to answer them like truly honestly. Is the person that I am dating the kind of person I want to marry? Will they be a good spouse to me when we're 50 years old? Will they be a good father or a good mother to our children? Do they love me with the pure, perfect, selfless love of God? And will they continue loving me with that pure love when we face obstacles down the road? If any of these questions make you hesitate at all, get out of this relationship, run, leave. Do not yoke yourself with this person who's not gonna lead you to God. You are worth so much more than the heartache that you will inevitably put yourself through. If you continue to stay in a relationship with someone who won't help you be the person you're called to be, nor is the kind of person that will help you enter into a good marriage. Spare yourself the pain and the heartache and the drama and the years it might take to heal by dating someone that you shouldn't be dating. And I know it's scary to be alone. Sometimes it's easier to be with a person who we know isn't that great than to be alone. And I get that and I understand that. Something that I have come to realize is that it is so much more scary to waste my time with the wrong person than it is to be alone. So being alone, being single for a bit, for a season, for a years, that's okay. That's a great, blessed, beautiful time. And through this time of singleness, you can fully get to know who you are and who God has created you to be. And it will best prepare you to enter into the sacrament of marriage because marriage is not about finding your other half. You're not one half looking for another half and then you'll be whole. No, you are a whole person. God created you whole. No other person in your life can complete you. If that's your expectation going into marriage, your marriage will fail and you will be left unsatisfied. Marriage is two whole people entering into a covenant relationship. Whether you're in middle school, high school, college, young adult, above, the best way is to focus on becoming a whole person. Focus on becoming mature, wise, and virtuous. Focus on becoming the person Mr. Right or Ms. Right would want to date and then marry and raise a family with. Work on developing a personality on hobbies, on likes, and interests. Build good, solid relationships with both guys and girls. And take this time, this period of singleness, to pray for your future spouse and the marriage and family that you will share. You have no idea the struggles that your future spouse might be facing at this exact moment. And your prayers can help them. Help them in their own life and help lead them them to you. God wants your abundant life. An abundant life does not come from dating someone who does not lead you to God. It's not how it works. Prepare your heart to be ready to enter into the relationship that God has in store for you, which is with a person who loves God, who loves you, who wants your good. Anyone else isn't worth your time. They're worth your prayers and your love from a distance, but they're not worth your heart. Dating as a Christian can be really hard. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible. People can do hard things you can do hard things. It is possible for you to date well. It is possible for you to help your partner enter into the fullness of their vocation, even if it's not with you. If you date someone and if you discern you're not right for each other, and that you can still see them years from now, not be ashamed of how you behave, that you can be proud of the time that you spent with each other and happy that that time has helped prepare you to enter into marriage, which is the purpose of Christian dating. <music>